Hello everyone, I would like to let you know about my forthcoming online weekend retreat from December the 2nd to the 4th titled The Great Stillness. Why are silence and stillness really the, the essence of all the great religious and spiritual traditions? Because the the activity of our minds, that is, thinking and perceiving, refract the one infinite and indivisible reality, making it appear as a multiplicity and diversity of people, places and, and things. Therefore, one cannot know reality through the mind any more than one can see white snow through orange-tinted glasses. In order to know reality, one has to come out of the mind, or rather, the mind must come to, to silence, not a, not a disciplined silence, but a natural silence, an effortless silence that is the inevitable consequence of this understanding. Of course, not everybody desires to know the nature of reality. However, I would suggest that a scientist's desire for understanding, an artist's desire for beauty, and indeed everybody's desire for, for peace and happiness, and the desire we have for love in friendship or intimate relationship is really the desire to be divested of all the limitations that our mind superimposes on reality, leaving that reality revealed. In other words, the experiences of understanding, beauty, peace, joy and love are really interventions of reality into our normal limited view of it. In other words, our desire for understanding, beauty, peace, joy and love is really the, the gravitational pull that reality itself exerts on each of our minds and hearts. And this is what the uh, Sufi mystic Hafiz said. It's what he meant when he said, uh, ever since happiness heard your name. It has been running through the streets, trying to find you. And this is what uh, the Christian mystic, Meister Eckhart, was referring to when he said, there is a huge silence inside each one of us that beckons us into itself. And the recovery of our own silence can begin to teach us the language of heaven. And this was echoed several hundred years later by the um, Indian sage uh, Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj. And I want to read some excerpts um, to you from this um, book, his well-known book, I Am That. And uh, in it he, he says this, uh, all, the ob all the objects of consciousness form the universe. Now, he doesn't, of course, mean by this that the universe consists only of the content of each of our finite minds. Uh, when he speaks of consciousness, he means the, the, the universal consciousness uh, of which each of our finite minds is a, a temporary localization. So he's suggesting that the entire universe is, is essentially made of infinite consciousness. All the objects of consciousness form the universe. 
What is beyond both, supporting both, is the supreme state, a state of utter stillness and silence. Whoever goes there disappears. It is unreachable by words or by the mind. You may call it God or Parabrahman or Supreme Reality, but these are names that are given by the mind. It is nameless, contentless, effortless and spontaneous, beyond existence and non-existence. And coming back to the mystical Christian tradition, it is for exactly the same reason that Meister Eckhart said nothing in creation, nothing in all creation is so like God. That's his name for the ultimate reality. Nothing in all creation is so like God as stillness. Thinking refracts the one infinite, indivisible reality, God's being, into names. And perceiving divides it into forms. In order to know that one reality, the names and forms must subside. That is, thinking and perceiving must come to an end. And the mind's silence that ensues is its invitation to reality, to reveal itself as it essentially is. And re reading again from Nisargadatta, but in reality only the ultimate is, that is only God's infinite being ultimately is. The rest is a matter of name and form. As long as you cling to the idea that only what has name and form exists, the Supreme will appear to you non-existing. When you understand that names and forms are hollow shells without any content whatsoever, and that what is real is nameless and formless, you will be at peace, immersed in the deep silence of reality. Nisargadatta is not denying the reality of the world, the reality of names and forms. He is, uh, he is upgrading it. He's saying that the multiplicity and diversity of names and forms, that is the appearance of the world, is not real in the way it appears to be, just as the landscape we see in a movie, or the Caribbean beach that we dream of at night, is not real in the way it seems to be. However, there is a reality to the landscape in the movie. It is the screen. Likewise, there is a, a reality to the Caribbean beach that we dream of at night. It's not really made out of sand and water and trees and sky. It's made out of the activity of our mind, the dreamer's mind. So Nisargadatta, Nisargadatta is, is denying the independent existence of the names and forms that we perceive as the world. But he is upgrading the world and suggesting that its reality is really the one infinite, indivisible, a whole whose nature is peace, God's being in Christian terms or in religious terms. And, and it is found not by the mind because the mind can only see names and forms. So the mind must come to silence. This is the what he calls the, he says, 
when you understand that names and forms are hollow shells without any content whatsoever, and that the real is nameless and formless, then you will be at peace, immersed in the deep silence of reality. And again, we find exactly the same understanding uh, in the Christian tradition, Meister Eckhart, uh, the great uh, 13th century mystic, uh, says, uh, for whoever would enter God's ground, his innermost part, must first enter his own ground, his own innermost part. For, for none can know God who does not first know their self. So, like Nisargadatta, Ma Meister Eckhart is saying that the mind must come to, to silence, to stillness, its innermost essence. And in this way, in knowing our own innermost essence, we come to know the, the ultimate reality of the universe, God's being. And again from Nisargadatta, he says, um, the real is not as the real is not a state of something else. Only in silence and in darkness can it be seen or heard. And then again later, the seed of spiritual life grows in silence and darkness until its appointed hour. Uh, the same understanding uh, we find in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, what is known by the mind is unknown by awareness. And what is known by awareness or consciousness, what is known by consciousness is unknown by the mind. Let me give you an analogy to make this clear. Many of you will be familiar with my uh, analogy of the actor John Smith who pays the part of King Lear. John Smith's experience when he is alone at home, the, pe the peace and the quiet joy that he feels cannot be known through the part he plays King Lear because King's Lear, King Lear's uh, experience is one of uh, agitation, sorrow and conflict. So in the form of King Lear, John Smith cannot know his innate peace and quiet joy. And likewise, without assuming the form of King Lear, John Smith cannot know King Lear's sorrow, misery and conflict. What is known by John Smith is unknown to King Lear. What is known by King Lear is unknown to John Smith. What is known by consciousness is unknown to the mind. What is known by the mind is unknown to consciousness. Therefore, the mind must uh, go out of itself. It must cease being itself. It must let go of all the knowledge and experience that it acquires through thinking and perceiving until only its essence, pure consciousness, shines. And uh, that is our access to reality. It's exactly the same as going back to Meister Eckhart again. It's exactly the same as he uh, expresses when he says uh, when I am able to establish myself in nothing and nothing in myself uprooting and casting out what is in me then I can pass into the naked being of God which is the naked being of the spirit uh, establishing ourself in nothing means to to let go of the entire content of our experience which which temporarily qualifies our being. And when our being is divested of all the qualities that it derives from the content of experience, it stands revealed as unlimited being, 
infinite being, God's being. God's being shines in each of us as the experience I am, before the words I am. As such, the experience I am is, is God's confession in our hearts. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that the experience I am which shines in and as the very heart of ourself is God's presence. All that is necessary is to to stay with the I am, to stay as the I am. The simple awareness of being before it is coloured or qualified by experience. Going back to Nisargadatta Maharaj, if, if you want to know your true nature, you must have yourself in mind all the time until the secret of your being stands revealed. Not yourself a person, a body, a mind, a collection of thoughts, feelings, memories, sensations, perceptions and so on. But, but our self, our essential self, that aspect of our self that has always been with us. That aspect of our self that remains consistently present throughout the three states of waking, dreaming and sleeping. That aspect of our self that, that cannot be removed from us. That aspect of our self that we, that we call I the pure I before it is qualified or conditioned or limited by experience. The pure I, the divine name, that which shines in us as our essential being, God's being. If you want to know your nature, you must have yourself in mind all the time until the secret of your being is revealed and what is the secret of our being the secret of our being is that our being is god's being the finite being that we seem to be is really god's infinite being temporarily clothed in human experience but never really never really being or becoming anything other than itself this, this remaining in the I am as the I am. The awareness of simply being uh, is the great silence, the great stillness. It is the, the highest prayer and uh, the ultimate surrender. So I hope that some of you may be able to join me on my online retreat the first weekend of December, uh, the great stillness, and look forward to seeing some of you then. God bless.